this is where we get to the cool part. Uh, this is how we make music uh, and how we uh, uh, do a lot of other stuff like play jump rope. These are called, what we're about to learn about is standing waves. Now, uh, what I'm going I'm to show you a standing wave. I'm going to show it to you live first, and then we'll do the computer simulation. A standing wave is formed by interference between a transmitted or sent wave and a reflected wave. First note, when I send a trough, a crest is reflected from the fixed end. If I send a continuous wave, then a continuous wave is reflected back and interferes with the sent wave. However, it tends to be kind of a jumble, a confusing mix-up when the sent and reflected waves exhibit superposition or interference. If I send a wave at the exact right frequency, however, the reflected wave interferes with it in such a way to create what is called a standing wave. It is this pattern which seems to stay in the same place or in some way stand still. Okay, so a standing wave is formed by superposition. What's the other word for superposition? Interference. It's formed by superposition of two waves moving in opposite directions. It's often an incident wave and it's reflection. When the interfering waves have just the right frequency, which we call a resonance frequency, or resonant frequency, either way, I use resonance. Uh, when, we, when it has that specific frequency, so that parts of the, uh, it it's, depends on the spring and the medium, but it has a frequency so that parts of the standing wave called nodes, that is where destructive interference always happens, at a node. They seem to remain motionless. Points at which cons constructive interference always happens, in other words, the waves are always combining to form crests and troughs. Those are called antinodes. And you can actually see this process in this next demo. This demo right here is a fantastic demonstration that'll help us understand what's going on. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this. This is simply a wave on a spring that is heading towards a wall where it's attached. And what's going to happen is it is going to reflect when a wave of reflects from a fixed point, what does it do? Inverts. It inverts. This is going to invert, and you will see the inverted wave in blue. But what's uh, more important is that you'll see how the inverted wave that's reflected interferes and creates a new wave. And if you watch all these, uh, the, the black parts of this, you'll see actually what is happening to the spring. So you can see where they, when they interfere at this point, they always interfere constructively. We got troughs adding to troughs right there, and we've got crests adding to crests right there. And no matter what, they're always adding up. Now, why is it that this point right here, uh, when it actually hits zero, what is interfering constructively to make it add up to zero? No, we never have a crest and a trough hit there. Notice that when it actually crosses the middle line when it's zero, what's the amplitude of both waves when this actually, when this black wave is zero? Both of the individual ones are zero. You see how right now both the red wave and the blue wave add up to zero. That's why for this part, it's always constructive interference. Why is this labeled A where there's always constructive interference? Why is it labeled A? What does it stand for? Antinode. Now let's look at this part right next to it labeled N. You'll notice where it's labeled N, the red wave and the blue wave are always what to each other? Equal in magnitude is right, but also what, look at the directions of the blue wave and the red wave opposite so it is always destructively interfering at this point that is called n for node. node notice that destructive interference always happens at that point anti-node constructive interference always happening node destructive interference always happening and that is why you get this pattern called a standing wave i'm going to remove the red and the blue 
just so you can see what's actually going on here. This is the wave we get. It's called a standing wave. It appears to stand still. But we, instead of crests and troughs, only standing waves have these things called antinodes, like here. And it goes from a crest to a trough. And nodes, where it does not move at all. So antinodes, at the antinodes, we're always having what kind of interference? Constructive. At the node, 100% of the time, we're having what kind of interference? Destructive interference. And that is how a standing wave is formed. Here's a demonstration with a standing wave. And you can see that you can even grab the standing wave at the node, and it doesn't bother the wave at all. The wave just keeps on going. You can also have standing longitudinal waves. If you look in this double closed end tube, you can see that there are spots, such as right here, where the molecules are not moving at all. Those are called displacement nodes. You can also find spots where the molecules are moving back and forth maximally in simple harmonic motion. Those are displacement antinodes. Here at the end of the tube is a displacement node. Here at the other end of the tube is a displacement node. Uh, these longitudinal standing waves can also occur with one side of the tube open. And at that open end, you'll always have an antinode. At a closed end, you'll always have a node. You can even have both sides open, in which case at both open ends there are displacement antinodes. Down here, what we're looking at are graphs of what's happening. We have a displacement versus position in the tube graph. We also have a divergence from average pressure, a pressure versus position graph. Bottom line, longitudinal waves can be standing waves as well. Standing waves are employed by every single musical instrument and many different technologies, including lasers and microwave ovens. And sometimes we get standing waves where we do not want them, such as on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Now you can test your understanding of standing waves by answering these questions. This man escaped from the Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse by walking on which part of the standing wave? Also, if you were going to rebuild this bridge, which part would you want to reinforce? Which part of the standing wave would need to stop moving so that the bridge would not collapse? If you answered, the man was walking on the node, and you'd want to reinforce the anti-node, then you are starting to get standing waves.